Hello. <laughs> In the last discussion, um, we discussed the greatest commandment. Jesus said, love God with all your heart inside here, with all your soul, that's your whole personality, your life and all, everything about your will, your chooser, your thinker, everything. Well, the thinker is the next one. In your mind, up in here, and um, in your strength. And that's the energy and the power of everything, all of those. So it's, it's, God's not looking for the outside stuff, although that's, that happens. You'll live according to what you have on the inside. If you're loving people, then you'll treat them well on the outside. You're not going to hit them. <laughs> you know? So, you know, if you open up deeply, this is what God sees the inside. Now, I know these are parts of the body and things like that, but it's really, it's the inside. Can you see that? Um, it's the inside. Now, I know this is sort of crazy looking at the lungs and the guts and all that, but I want you to think, like picture the invisible spirit in there, in the heart of the person, and in the mind up here. Whoa. Um, it, it's this stuff up in here. See if I can get him get this open like yeah it's kind of tough i'll just leave it closed anyway the mind the the brain and all and the mind the thoughts and you know this this is what god's really saying it's the outside and by the way in, in the couple videos from now or so maybe next video the man who's talking to the scribe says oh it's not the sacrifices the outward animal sacrifices oh it's not the external it's the internal inside not outside. <laughs> All right. So there you go on that. And so then he, then Jesus said, and then there's a second one. Now the guy only asked for the greatest commandment. And yet Jesus added this one right alongside. He said, and the second commandment is, he didn't ask for two. It says right here, um, <clears throat> The most important one is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. By the way, he did start with that. He's starting with what's called the Shema. It's the thing that the Jewish people um, do all the time. In the morning, they, they recite this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. And they do in the morning, they do in the evening. They have a mezuzah, I think what it's called. There's a thing, on, uh, like a little container type thing at the doorpost as you walk into the door. They kiss and they remember that. They may even confess it. I'm not sure if they say it out loud. Here is for the Lord your God is one Lord. See, in, in the time, times of, of, his, of history, to even today, there's a lot of people who believe in more than one God. And so it starts with, get it straight, one God. The Lord your God is one. Okay, it's good. Um, then it, it, and then he goes on and says, love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, strength. And then he said, the second is this. He jumped right in and answered. He didn't answer the second. I mean, he asked, ans answered it. I mean, he said it. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. Commandment, singular. For one commandment, really, honestly, it's one is love. It's because God is love. And if you're operating to please him, you got to become like him. You got to do what he wants. And he is the lover of the universe. He's absolutely awesome in that. So, same with his kids, the image bearers. We are the likeness of God because we're his kids. You give your life to Jesus. All right, that's good. So, by the way, in another passage, it's Luke 10, um, the story, the one lawyer says, well, who is your neighbor? He's kind of testing. By the way, this, this scribe guy that came up to him, kind of a doctor of the law, you know, he's a, he knows the word of God really well. He's kind of a professor type thing. Um, it's very possible that the people from Jerusalem, he's in Jerusalem and all the, the leadership, the Sanhedrin and all, maybe it was from the Sadducees, maybe it was a scribe of the Sadducees, or maybe it was a scribe of the Pharisees, this teacher of one of those groups or some. Maybe it wasn't one, one of those groups either. <laughs> but I think they may, maybe they sent him and Matthew says he tempted, he tested Jesus. But he himself wasn't testing. He was kind of testing because of them. He could have been. I think he was really a good guy. But he was the only one that agreed with Jesus. We'll get to that in the next video. But he's the only scribe in all the Gospels that agreed with him. All the others just like him and they didn't agree. All right. Now, the second commandment, intriguing. Love your neighbor as yourself. By the way, he's quoting from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. 
So he's putting two verses together. He's putting Deuteronomy 6, I think it's 4 or something, and then Leviticus 19.18. He's putting those two together. Now, the Jewish people and the leaders and the rabbis and all over the time certainly taught one and then they taught the other. And there's a little bit of maybe combining, but not much. Jesus absolutely combined the right and almost in, out of the same breath. He said, love God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, and love your neighbors yourself. <laughs> all of it together. <laughs> because actually you can't do one without the other, honestly. Now the second one, you sort of can love your neighbor without loving God, but not the way God loves him. You just can't do it. But you cannot love God and not love your neighbor. Did you hear that? If you say, I love God, and you don't, you don't love others, doesn't, it's not happening. And that's what it says, by the way, in 1 John, 1 John 3 and 4 and all that. Yeah, you, just, you don't love God. How can you love God who you can't see, and then you love, and you don't like, hate, or you indifferent or whatever to the ones you can see, the ones that God made, who he cares about and loves? The images of God. They're made in the likeness of God. Even sinners, even people who don't know God. They're not acting like him, but they have the, the, like the stamp of his image. Things about God is what, things about people was, came from what God is like. He's a person, he's conscious, he has feelings, he has will, he's in all those things. Humanity is in the image of God. And how can you ha say you love God when you don't like that image? Each person's made the image of God. Even, even our enemies are made in the image of God. So what does it mean to love your neighbor? Well, I would suggest, uh, and, and Luke 10, I was going to say this, that he told this story, this parable about who is your neighbor, the guy who you know, said it. And he talks about the Samaritan, really cool one, like going to the story, but it really says who your neighbor is. Now, in the Jewish context, in that Leviticus 19 passage, are you still with me? Hang in there. And in, in that passage, it really is in context to Jewish neighbors, your Jewish people, if you read it carefully, verses, verse before and all that. So he's really talking about that, but that's not necessarily what God limited it for, and Jesus definitely unlimited it. He's saying your neighbor, and that's why I say that is because he takes a Samaritan who the Jewish people, well, many of them didn't like the Samaritans, and he used him as an instance of, of a person who loved uh, the Jewish person, uh, you know, he loved this Jewish guy who was got beat up. Anyway, Luke, read Luke 10. And what he's saying is, that's your neighbor, not to Jewish. You're supposed to love your Samaritans. You're supposed to love people who aren't loved and lovely. So it's the world. We are to love the world, your neighbor. Now, it's obviously obvious that there's people on the uh, other side of the country, uh, other side of the world that's living in different countries that is not my neighbor. They're not like my neighbor here. I have neighbors here. But I have this sense of loving everyone. I don't care where you're from and what you're like or anything. I love you because you're in the image of God. That's what Jesus is saying. By the way, Jesus, God says, so love the world. <laughs> he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for the whole world. He did. And so he gave his life for the whole world. All right, so so here's a, a group of uh, neighbors and uh, people that you run into. It could be like a couple farmers here, like here, husband and wife, or maybe they're not. They're just neighbors themselves. But here, here's the uh, here's farmers. I'm just giving you sort of samples. You know, anyone you run into, even if they're kind of foul mouthed or they they don't act really well, you love them. You have a, a an intrinsic sense of love of them. This guy's a construction worker. He's saying stop. You know, so. Uh, this guy, it looks like, is a um, looks like he's a soldier. Absolutely, he's a soldier in an army. Yeah, you know we're supposed to love everyone. Uh, this, this, this. It looks like a vet. Uh, yeah, he, she's taking care of veterinarian. A veterinarian. <laughs> she's taking care of a little dog. So uh, we love this tennis player. Yeah, I hope she wins. No, <laughs> so right here. Um, yep, love the tennis player, player, even if she is wearing too short of a skirt, in my opinion. <laughs> of course, I have to wear it. A lot of them wear that tennis. All right, but anyway, and then, uh, oh, he's, oh, you really love him. He's selling ice cream. No. <laughs> well, yeah, you love him, but you love them all equally. Now, that doesn't mean you have to love their character. God hates the character of some people. He doesn't like in them at all, like what they're like, but he loves them. He gives rain and sunshine to everyone. He feeds people. He feeds. He gives enough food for everybody on the earth. He loves everyone, even though he really hates some of the what they're like. Oh, he said, "This is a police officer." Yeah, 
Um, thank God for police officers. But here, here, this this is like someone you love. Yeah. Or it looks like a ranger. She has her binoculars here. I don't know if you can tell this. She's a park. Um, uh, what do you call them? A park ranger, I guess, or something at a park. And let's see, who is this? This guy right here. Oh, um, like environment type person who's recycling or something. This is her job here. Notice this female, male, black, white, you know, all, you know, just could be any, any nationality. Um, score! <laughs> He's a uh, referee at a football game. Sometimes we may not like their calls. You blew that one. You really made a mistake. But I love you. <laughs> As was. And then I added a little, little guy right here. We even love the little neighbors who are yet in the mom's womb. We love the other human beings who are yet coming to, coming into the earth. Yay! So, <laughs> we love them too. Yeah, you love everyone. What does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? Let me say a couple more things and I'll finish. Loving your neighbor as yourself is basically recognizing that you're a self. <laughs> you're a person. Oh, really? <laughs> you're a self. Now, um, here's a self. And then there's another self, like another person, equal. You love your you love this person as you love yourself. Well, however you're treating yourself, you should treat this person. Now, if you're treating yourself poorly, that's not really loving yourself very much, by the way. If you're treating yourself poorly, it doesn't mean, okay, I'm gonna treat him like I treat myself. <laughs> no, but God loves you and you should take care of yourself and love yourself. But the point is he's not up here and this person's down here. Now you might be up here in behavior, uh, you might be up there in smarts. You might be up there with having more money and possessions. So what? Poor people are just as equal as you are. Rich people are just as equal. If you're real poor and you're not very rich, they're not above you. They're equal in value. See, everybody's equal. So Jesus said, love your neighbor. Whoops, love your neighbor. Sorry. And the same was as yourself because you're two selves. You're equal in self and value. Now, what does that mean? How do you walk that out? What, how do I show love to your neighbor? Well, especially when you don't feel love. By the way, love God with your heart, your soul, strength, mind. Or I say strength, mind, mind, strength, whatever. And love your neighbor as yourself. What is this love thing? I could talk a long time about this. Let's make it quick. Let me start by saying it is not feeling. Although feelings do come along a lot of times with love. But there's maybe sometimes you're tired or oh, you're stressed or whatever, and you don't feel love. Like, it's not feeling. Love is not feeling. It's, number one, a preference. It's a choice uh, to love God, love. Although I have lots of feelings for God and people, but I've had, my feelings have grown over years. Um, it's like the capacity in my heart has changed. And it's you get tenderhearted and you're really soft and God's healing you and you're working and walking in Him, then you have a lot of emotion. Christianity is a lot of emotion, a lot of feeling. But if the feeling isn't there for whatever reason, kind of dry or you just don't feel like it, I still love. You love with as much as you can. Just like love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, all of it. Okay, so love your neighbor as yourself. Of course, you notice God is the supreme one that you love. But what does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? Um, I don't believe that you should... I'll say it this way. When you're hungry, what do you what do you do when you're hungry? Mom! If you're a child. <laughs> or you go to the refrigerator or whatever. If you're an adult, you go buy something or something, right? You love your neighbors yourself, and if you're hungry, you feed yourself. Don't you feed yourself, don't you, when you're hungry? Unless you're fasting or something, that's special. Loving your neighbor as yourself means if they're hungry, you feed them. Because you treat them like you're the self. Like if that's you, like I'm Gordon. If I look at a person and I see that this person is a Gordon, another Gordon, then I should feed him because when I'm hungry, I feed myself, I should feed him. So when you're hungry, you feed yourself. If that's what it means to love your neighbor yourself, you feed the hungry. How about thirsty? You know, hey, you know, you want, they're thirsty. There's people in parts of the world that need water. We need to help them if we can. Close, if you, you know, you know, we want to clothe ourselves, And so when, when, if we see some people who are like, don't have clothes and all that, then we want to help clothe them because that's, that's me. You treat that person as if it's me. 
That's what it means. All right, another one is um, hurt and pain. What do you do when you get hurt? Um, let's say you hurt your finger and go, oh, and you hold it, or, you, you know, oh, like this. Mommy, kiss it for the little ones. <laughs> you can give me a kiss. That doesn't mean go kissing fingers everywhere. <laughs> but if you've got hurt, and if you're in pain, you try and help that pain. If you've got a stomach ache, you, you, you know, bend over, or you go get some medicine, or, you know, you pray for sure. You know, various things that you do. Um, if you're tired, you lie down, you know, and all that. So when people are hurting and in pain, what do you do? Try and comfort the pain. Try and help them in their hurt. You try and help yourself in your hurt. You don't just, oh, this is hurting. I'm going to hurt it more. <laughs> no, hit yourself. Or something. So you try and help people out of their pain and suffering and hurt. Uh, happiness. To me, by the way, I don't believe Christians who really love God do not seek for their own happiness. You, that's what it really means to love God. You're seeking for that person's happiness. You love, you seek for other people's happiness above yourself. The Bible says, please others. It says, put others f first. It says, esteem others better to yourself, more important than yourself. And then, um, and then you you seek for their good for edification. I'm, I'm quoting different verses. I, I'm going to go on. But happiness is, you try and make people happy. Now, sometimes you can't make them happy. And you definitely want God to be first in happiness. You don't make them happy. To, if they want to do something wrong, you don't say, well, I'll make them happy. Do something wrong with them. No, that's against God. Now you're not loving God. He's first. All right. So peace. If you don't have peace inside, you try and find some peace, right? You try and get peace or peace in a relationship or, or, or whatever. People are looking for peace. And, and you try and bring peace to others, harmony, peace. Future, um, if, you're, you know, if you're thinking that I want a really good future and you make a good choices now for a good future, um, you try and help get your future good. Like you want to get an education, uh, be, able to, be able to make money so that your money can, you can live, but also you want that money to be able to give away and all that. Same thing with other people. You try and think about their future. So if they're doing wrong stuff and you know that's gonna, it's leading on a path that's going to lead to a poor future, try and stop them. And they may not like it, but you love them enough to try and rebuke them and correct them and help them. By the way, in that passage, very carefully, if you take it out right now and read it, Leviticus 19, verse um, 17, 16, 18, 17, 18 and all, it actually talks about if someone's doing wrong, you're supposed to try and stop them from doing wrong and rebuke them because you love them. And if you don't tell on others, if you're, if you're not a, if you, you need to be a snitch. If, if you're trying to tell someone that's do, doing wrong and they're hurting other people or they're doing wrong for themselves and they're not listening to you, you should go to a teacher or their parent or whatever and say, this person's doing wrong, you need to snitch on them because that's love. If you don't, you're really hating them. You don't really care about them. Wow, think about that one. So future is, is really important salvation um you know i wanted to get saved for his sake but of course now i really am all about him but i wanted to get saved you you know i didn't want to be in hell and i don't want to be wrong with god i needed salvation so i went after it you know what i'm gonna say if you love your neighbor if you love people you're gonna help them get saved and if you don't share about jesus you don't share the good news of jesus you're not trying to help people you're not trying to um say god forgives god wants to give you eternal life and you want to share I don't think you really care about them that much. Like if I had the cure for cancer and everybody had cancer and I was able to give them that cure and offer it, give them a, the remedy, the medicine or whatever for it, you better believe I'm going to try and help them, right? How much more the cure for their sin, which is in Jesus Christ. He's the answer for their sin problem. So it, yeah, really. So all these things right here, the hungry and you know peace and all that stuff, is a, an evidence of love. Now, there could be more things that you could th think of. You could probably think of some stuff on how you can love others. So there you go. I think that covers that pretty well. <laughs> uh, are you guys finished? I love you all, by the way. Yep, even you. Even though that's kind of crazy inside. It's, you know, I don't want to say gross. <laughs> no, it's beautiful what God did, the anatomy and the body and all. All right, I'm going off on other things. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Go love your neighbor and make a decision not feeling sometimes you don't feel like loving this guy who's acting foolish with you or that girl who's nasty or whatever you just love them anyway and oh i i could go on and on but real quick how do you how do you love people that you don't really like or something? because you looked above god is love and if you dwell in god you're staying close to god then god's love comes in you i know what i'm talking about by the way i told my cousin one time she said, this girl really doesn't like me at work and all that. I said, why don't you ask God to help you see that person who she's working with at a restaurant? Why don't you ask God to show you 
how he sees her. She actually did it. And I found out later she did it. She said, Lord, show me, give me eyes to see her how you see her. She prayed that. And the next time she came in, in, in her presence, she was overwhelmed, filled with the love of God for her. She started like tearing, uh, tears in her eyes and everything. She really a warm love and all that. For that person who couldn't stand her, they actually became friends. That love changed that other person's heart. I don't know if she ever got saved, that girl. She did. She had, my cousin was. That's really cool. All right. God bless you. Thanks for listening.